right. So, you just played your first Cruise Rock show. Yeah. We have. What was it like? Fantastic. We really enjoyed it. Yeah. Um, this is the first time we've been here. We've heard a lot about the festival. Lots of friends of ours have played here before. Um, last week we were in California and we were speaking to some of the guys from Rancid and they were saying yeah. what, what a good show it is and we'll have fun. And that's how it proved to work out yeah. as well. Yeah. There was, um, I had the feeling there was a lot of unity. Yeah. Is it always like that? The interaction yeah. with the crowd and yeah. everywhere you go? Yeah. We, we, try, we try to encourage that. We want everybody to have a good time. You know, but we, we, we thought today particularly long and hard about the songs to play and the set to play. And we wanted to try to win some new friends mm -hmm. because obviously there were people there that probably never seen us before. But at the same time, there were people there that knew us, so we wanted to play the old songs for those as well. Yeah. Um, so yeah, um, if there was unity, that was our ambition. That's what we aimed for. That's yeah. great. It's almost got better over the years as well. If you go back to the old days, mm -hmm. there was always lots of divisions. In the UK, it was um, years ago. It would be about football. So you would have uh, different football teams, um, and then it would be the North of England v the South of England, or Scotland v England, or, or whatever. And now, the people that are left in the scene are here because they have a passion for the music. So all the people that it was just a fashion for, they've all gone. And the people left love the music. And our shows, we always used to think that it would be our generation coming to watch us, but the fans are getting younger and younger. There's a good mix of male and female, mm -hmm. there's a mix of punks, skins, hardcore kids, just Everyone. normal people yeah. and mm -hmm. that's all, as a band, when you set out to write songs, that's, that's all you hope is that you reach um, an audience and they feel safe together and um, even within our scene there's a lot of other bands where it's the guys with their shirts off and mm -hmm. dancing really tough and you think a lot of people sort of hold back and it's not like that at one of our shows. It's we like, don't do that, do we? we no, don't, we, we don't take our shirts off. off. We don't you, you wouldn't want us to <laughs> take our shirts, shirts off. off. But, you know, people, private. we want people to feel safe. And uh, for us, it always feels like um, cup final day, like a big event where everyone's just out to have a good time. Yeah. So, cheers. Cheers, yeah. Next. <laughs> what was it like for Coxfair? Hang on a minute. You're the, you're, you're the camera girl. I didn't know it was a double interview. <laughs> Sorry, I was listening to you. Hello, how can we help you? It's okay. Hi. Hi. Uh, what was it like for uh, Cox Fair when you first started out? Uh, what are some of the things that you did to get noticed? And how difficult was it for you to do that? It was really hard. I mean, like most bands coming through, we, well, it, it's, it's totally different now. Right? My son's in a band and they have the power of the internet. You know, they have, they have, yeah, they, they have these wonderful machines to get everything out there and to get people to come to the gig. We didn't have that back in 1972. Yeah. You know, you, you, no you, media. it was word of mouth. So you, 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 if you could get a gig, you maybe have 10 people there. And you hope that next week, there'd be 11 people there. Mm -hmm. And you just had to grow your business, if you like, that way. That was the only way to do it. And to get people to have some faith in you. And in those days, you couldn't do anything independently. You had to have record company money behind you. And they were very selective about who they signed. And then there are also problems that, you know, you then owe them that money for the rest of your life. So it, it was tough. You know, the, the, the advent of punk was probably the best thing that happened to us personally because it opened doors and venues became available to play and the people that promoted those shows weren't necessarily interested in how good you were. It's just whether they considered you to be a punk band and whether you brought a few people into the show. So it's, cha it's changed a lot over the years. Um, but early on, our only concentration was on firstly getting some gigs from learning our trade, learning our business as, as a band, um, and then trying to make some records and, and get it out in the world to everybody else. We're lucky. You know, we, we, we feel now as though our career, if you like, has, has, been, has been very lucky. We've, we've, we've got to a stage now where we're just having so much fun. You know, and, and as Daryl says, if, if people come into the shows, go away with that impression as well, that they've had a really good night out, then, then we've achieved their aim. Yeah. Um, last week your new record, Forever, was released. Back on this side now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hello. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, back to you again, go on. Yeah. Um, does it mean that the band has no intention of quitting at all and the music will live on forever? Well, I think the, the very fact that the, the title there, Forever, I think we were very conscious that 
the music will live on forever. You know, long after we've gone, long after we, we stop and we can't do it anymore, there's one thing you've left behind, um, and that is your music. So even if we never play the notes again, it, it is there forever. Um, we don't plan on stopping as long as we're enjoying it and as long as we're healthy and people are enjoying and want to come and see us, we'll keep going. Uh, so it wasn't really a, a, an ending, um, but we were very conscious that we've got this amazing, uh, we've got, <laughs> we got this uh, amazing uh, life that we, we can um, live with our music and get to see the world, meet new friends, meet new people. And that's, I mean, that's exactly how the title came about. We were struggling to think of a name for the album. Um, one of the guys, the American guys who works at the record company, were just sitting around in an airport waiting to. Sorry, you're going to come and get the biggest gear bottle. Waiting the to. Um, Sorry, cheers. Waiting to come home, and the subject came up again. It was a case of, you know, we need now. Shut the door, Mick. Must be recorded. Shut the door. Shut the video. Sorry about the very amateur. Sorry about that. <laughs> no worries. So, so we were sitting around the airport. Trying, and the subject of what we should call the album came up again, and this guy just said, "Look, let's, why don't you call it Forever?" And we all went, "Why should we call it that?" He said, "Because that's what it will mean: is that long after you guys finish playing, your legacy will be that those songs are still there." And we looked at each other, and went, "Oh, Forever has been done before." And we worked out that the Spice Girls had done it, and, and, and Batman had done it. So we said, "Well, we're a good company, so yeah, Forever's great." Sometimes some bands you see them on the first uh, <laughs> night of the show of the tour. I mean, yeah. and then they they all live very far away, especially American bands. They all live yeah. very far away, and it's the first tour, first night of the tour, yeah. and you see that they still need a lot more practice. Yeah. So that can be bummer as well. Yeah. It all depends on, on the band. Yes. Yeah. Okay, your turn. Um, I like this taking in turns. <laughs> What moments stand out in your career above anything else? Christian, that's a very good question. I think, I think, uh, I, I don't know when it was, but the period of time when people started to come to the shows and sing the songs back at us, mm -hmm. that I think that was the, f the first time that we sort of looked at each other and thought, oh, you know, they, they like it. Feels good. Yeah, it feels good. Yeah, I mean, I, I, couldn't, I couldn't place it to, to a time or, or, or a country or even but um, for me, that was as a, as the singer. That was the I don't have to sing as much when they're singing, yeah, so I can put the mic there and they can get on with it. You know, so that that for me was a good, a good, a good time. All right. Yeah. yeah. I'm still I'm still waiting for my moment. <laughs> 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 there, there's there's so many highlights. Um, you know, personal highlights um, would be my first. Uh, show with the band. I was a fan of the band before I was in the band. I'm a, I'm a new boy. I've only been in the band 25 years. Holy. So uh, I was a fan and listened to the band before, you know, uh, before I was in them. So my first show was a, a special moment for me. Um, and being able to achieve things like um, playing in countries that you never would have got to, um, but this wonderful vehicle of being with your friends playing the music you love and getting to countries that, you know, I would never get to. Um, we're all working people. We don't, wouldn't have had the money to go to Argentina or Brazil or, yeah. or Croatia or Serbia or whatever. Fill it up. <laughs> yeah. Up to you, really. Oh. No, not really. Uh, no. Yeah. And, um, yeah, so it's, I, I think, uh, and without sounding really like all Hollywood and bleh, I think every gig is special because we never just go through the motions and just go, oh, it's another one, blah, blah. Every gig is special because we meet new people, uh, we reconnect with old friends, and because we don't do too much, yeah. it, it, every gig is an event, yeah. you know? Um, so yeah, ev everyone's special for us, really. We think about that consciously, because we get gig offers to go back to a place that maybe we played last year, yeah. and we say, it's too soon. You know, let's leave it another year, then we'll, we'll go back then. Because yeah, we don't want anyone to go, ah, oh, it's just them, it's them again. Yeah. We want I'll catch up next time oh, they come through, you know. They're playing, we haven't seen them for three years, and, and everyone comes out. I'm not sure they would go, ah, like that. They might just go, <laughs> they might just look on their phone and no, do that. New Friday. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Ah. You write songs that come from the heart. Does that work therapeutically for you in a way that it helps to deal with certain things in life? Um, 
Mm. Honestly, you for me, no. for me, <laughs> you answer this one. I'll be back in one second. Yeah. Uh, for me, I can't speak for Burge. The bass player uh, Burge uh, has historically written all the Coxman songs. The last two albums. I've written half, he's written half, and then the band all write together then once the song is there. For me, it's not like therapeutic. It doesn't really, it's not a, a, a release. Um, but you don't write anything for like a year or two years or three years. And it's something will really annoy you or you're really passionate about. And we've still got something to say, you know? And if that's why we haven't done an album for 10 years. We're not just writing because our... It's time to write an album, let's write another one. Um, we wait until we have something to say. Um, and that's where we can get a collection of songs that we hope mean something to other people as well. So it's not really therapy or therapeutic, but um, we certainly don't just write songs to order. We wait until there's you know, something more we want to, to write about. Yeah. Do you have one more? Uh, uh, let's see. Uh, your songs have been covered by many other bands. Which band did a very good job on playing one of your songs according to you? Um, there's been lots of bands that um, I personally really respect that have, have um, covered us. So Agnostic Fronts, um, uh, too, there's too, too many to, uh, to mention really, but uh, there was a couple that I really um, like, and there was a band in England called The Dead Pets and they were a young punk band with a, a brass section and they did, uh, uh, were coming back I think uh, they did and that was really, really good. Um, uh, who, who's covered our songs that we think is, there's so many that um, we actually like? Um, Agnostic Front, you said them, yeah. you Bouncing Souls. Yeah, the Bouncing Souls did a really good cover actually. Yeah, That's they, a really, yeah, yeah. Yeah. In fact, my, yeah. I think my wife knew a Cox Sparrow song when I met her yeah. because it was uh, she, she thought it was a Bouncing Souls song. I was like, no, 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 that's I'm us. I'm sure still yeah. some, but, of, yeah. some of the Bouncing Souls might yeah. not yeah. know yeah. that. Yeah, that's true. Um, yeah, there are lots of people that, and we're always very humbled when, when somebody uh, covers one of our songs. You know, it's not anything we take for granted. It's, um, it's pretty cool still. We've also had a number of bands that have named themselves after our songs as well. Yeah, I'm in mean, one of them. Yeah, he's in one of them. Archie Archie. Archie. Yeah. Oh, cool. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. And bands that have named themselves after album titles yeah. and stuff. So, yeah. Sorry. Okay, I have so, one last question. Is it going to take three minutes for us to answer? Then no, you. no, yeah, I guess not. Is it shirt off? <laughs> yeah, shirt off. <laughs> <laughs> Interviews off! Off, oh, finished! <laughs> That bad thing. <laughs> what are some of your favorite 21st century bands? Whoa, 21st century bands. There's a lot, that, that's the positive thing about this scene as well, is there are lots of good new bands coming through. And the, the, the problem for us is that uh, um, they all sound really good. Everyone's production in the studio sounds better, and that's something that, with our new album um, uh, that we've just done, Forever, available from all good record shops. Um, <laughs> or whatever. Or, yeah, whatever, <laughs> whatever. Um, we really wanted this to sound better than anything else we've had in the past. Previously, we've had good songs, but the production has not been so good. And now, like especially bands coming out of America, they all sound so great. Um, so we had to, it forced us to think about things a bit more and think about what studios to use, what equipment to use, what, uh, because we wanted something that was strong sounding. Um, so there are so many good bands that not only uh, have good songs now, but they, they sound good as well. Um, Favourites? I'm going to mention my son's band and, and, and unplug him here because I'm wearing his t-shirt. Um, good young look, you know, good young band, all good looking boys, write great songs, um, have far too much energy for my liking. Um, they're doing really Nothing well. Nothing like take that. Nothing like <laughs> take that. They could be, they could be like take that. I'll, I'll tell him you said that. Um, yeah, so the Bastard Breaches are, are, are a band that's coming through. Um, they, they play a lot in Europe at the moment. And when we do the, the club and pub shows in the UK, they're going to be able to be with us as well later in the year. So, um, you know, that'll be, that'll be good fun.
Yeah. There, there's, there's, loads, there's loads of great bands that are yeah. coming through and see at the moment, you know. We've got, and the good thing with doing our small shows that we're doing later this year, we've been able to sort of choose some of the bands from the sort of street punk side of things. You've got bands in the UK like Arch Rivals, um, Crown Court are really good, Angry Agenda. Uh, uh, Angry Agenda. Um, and, you know, even, uh, you know, out of America, there's a lot of good bands like Noise, um, Roadside Bombs, Old Firm Casuals, their last album was really Swayed good. Razors. Yeah, Sway. So, yeah, there's lots of, uh, it's a very healthy uh, scene. And some bands that I consider new, like in England, um, Deadline were, were a great band, but actually they, they formed like 15 years ago now. So things that you think are new aren't actually a uh, um, new band, but still would have been a 21st century band. Yeah, absolutely. There's lots of bands, it's very healthy. And it's good that, um, and it's, it's great when you find a new young band that you really like. I mean, my head is so full of music, I almost have no space for anything more. And when you get a new record, you go, oh, that's really fucking good. You know, it's exciting still. So yeah, it's... we were listening to Roadside Bombs, weren't we? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, was in, we was in California last week, and, and there's a really, really good band there. Um, and we listened to some of their stuff, and it made us sort of sit up and think, "Wow, this is this is this is really good." Well, I didn't know who they were for my uh, uh, sins, and uh, a, a track came on on in in the van. I said, "Who's this?" And the driver said, "Oh, Roadside Bombs." And he had stuff on like uh, random. Mm -hmm. And then ten minutes later, another song came. I said, "Oh, this is really good. Who's this band?" And it's the same band, band. Mm -hmm. happened three times. I was like, "Okay, that's, then you uh, that's like a band it. I have to check out." Yeah. You know? But, yeah. Cox Barrett, good, young, up and coming. Archie Belgian! 21st century band. 